Hi, nurse family, nurse Erica here. And today I'm gonna to teach you how to insert an indwelling urinary catheter on a female patient. So stick around. Okay, so as with any skill that I ever teach on my videos, I do use a reference today for this um, tutorial. I am using the Taylor's fifth edition clinical nursing skills textbook for your validation or if you're going to perform this procedure in a hospital make sure that you refer to the appropriate reference or policy all right so let's get started first thing when i see my order i'm going to want to think about why does this patient need a urinary catheter is it really indicated in this situation because we know that urinary catheters cause hospital acquired infections so if we don't need it we want to encourage our providers not to order them okay so in this case my patient is here with a suspected sepsis and they're inserting the urinary catheter to measure urine output so um, the next thing I want to think about is are there any contraindications for this patient um, having a urinary catheter so in this case there are none so now what I'd like to do before I gather my supplies is go into my patient's room identify them. Can you tell me your name and date of birth? I'm going to check your ID band. Jamie Hill. Okay. And the name and date of birth matches my computer. So I have the right patient. So Miss Hill, the provider has ordered a urinary catheter. That is a catheter that's going to go into your bladder to drain the urine. It's going to allow us to measure it accurately. Okay. Is that all right? Okay. So my patient says it's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and gather my supplies. For this procedure, I'm going to need a set of regular clean gloves. I always need hand sanitizer. Some disposable washcloths to clean the perineum. My indwelling urinary catheter kit, and this one I have today is a 14 French. I also need a securing device to secure my catheter to the thigh once I am done, and today I have a stat lock. And I like to bring an extra set of gloves just in case something happens and my hands become contaminated. I don't have to run out the room. Okay, so we've explained the procedure. We gather our supplies. Now we wanna make the patient, um, put the patient in the optimal position for us to insert this catheter. So what I'm gonna do is elevate your bed. When I elevate the bed, I'm looking for the bed to be between my thigh, mid thigh, and waist area so that I'm not leaning over and hurting my back. This is also gonna make me comfortable during the procedure so that I'm able to do it um, correctly. The other thing is that Miss Hill needs to be lying flat. That's gonna make it a lot easier for me to insert this catheter. So I'm gonna lie you down flat. And if you have any trouble breathing or if you feel any discomfort at any point, please let me know, okay? All righty. So I'm gonna um, put on some clean gloves. And I should mention that we would provide privacy. We would close the curtain so that the patient is not exposed. Okay, Miss Hill, just be careful as I put this rail down. My patient has a pulse oximeter and I'm gonna keep that on because during the procedure, if she starts to desaturate, I wanna be able to know that. So I am gonna expose my patient and this is the time to do it. I know that we talk a lot about dignity and privacy in the hospital, but in a sterile procedure, we do not want the gown touching the um, sterile field. I'm gonna go up a little bit more. So I've exposed my patient. Now I'm gonna put the patient in the optimal position for inserting the catheter. So I'm gonna bend your knee. Now, when you, when you are doing this, you really wanna think about what your patient is able to do. So if I have a patient who's not able to help me in this process, then I definitely need assistance. So I might need a nurse or two to come and hold the patient's legs and assist me. The other thing is, in many facilities, you now need another nurse to witness. So sterile technique and when inserting a urinary catheter is so important to prevent a urinary tract infection or a hospital acquired infection. So your facility may require that you have a nurse. If, a, if you don't require a nurse, but you need assistance, then you can have a nursing assistant or a patient care tech assist you. And what I'm gonna do is wipe with the um, 
disposable wipes, the perineum. And this is the best time for me to start to locate the meatus, which is sometimes difficult to find. So while I'm not sterile and I'm cleaning the area, this is the time to do that, okay? For clarity, I just wanna point it out to you. So when I open the labia, this top hole right here, this orifice right here is the meatus. This one right here is the vagina. And lastly, that's the anus. Okay, so okay. I cleaned the patient using the peri wipes. For the purpose of the video, I did not go through that. So if you're wondering, when did she do that? But what I, what I always tell my students is that this is your work area. This is like your home office, right? So you really want to set things up that's going to be comfortable. So think about where you're putting things. So there's a perforated line here. I'm gonna take my kit out and I like to keep this bag just in case I need an extra um, garbage. So I put this at the foot of the bed. The kit, there's a flap here. The one that goes away from you is the one that you're gonna open first. A couple of things to mention, I do not want to reach over. I'm gonna open to the side and then the right side and then the left side. And then I have the one that's closest to me is going to be last. So we can touch the one inch border. The one inch border is considered non-sterile. So you can open that if you feel like you need to. Anything that is hanging over the overbed table is considered non-sterile. So just keep in mind if anything falls on that, that it's no longer sterile. Okay, so the first thing I see are my sterile gloves and I'm gonna go ahead and put them on over on the side of the table without putting my back to my sterile field. Okay, so now I'm sterile and everything in this kit is sterile. So what I wanna do is set up everything that I need two hands for. So basically I'm gonna set everything up before I contaminate my one hand. So the first thing you're gonna see is this drape that is gonna go under the patient or in between the patient's legs. So what we're gonna do is we're going to have the shiny side. The shiny side is the side that faces the patient. So that should be down, that's this side here. And I'm gonna put my thumb on the corners and turn it in this way because as I'm sliding this under the patient or in between the patient's legs, I wanna make sure that I do not contaminate my hands. Okay. If the patient is able to lift their buttocks, you can ask them to do so. But I'm really happy with that right there. The next thing I'm gonna do is grab the fenestrated drape. You know it's fenestrated because it has this little opening here. Place that. And now I'm going to go through my kit and start preparing everything. These are my um, swab sticks. These are my antiseptic wipes. So it's very important that if you have betadine in the kit that you ask your patient about any allergies. Well, you're gonna ask about allergies anyway, but you might wanna ask specifically to betadine, okay? And I personally like to have my sticks up like this. You'll see people do it a little differently. They might put it on their tray, that's totally fine but I like to kind of just stand mine up right in my little box. The next thing you're gonna see is your sterile water. This syringe is used to fill the, um, the balloon in the urinary catheter. That's what helps keeps it in place. And if you look on your urinary catheter, it'll tell you how much um, sterile water you need to fill the balloon. So this one, it says five to 10 milliliters and I have a 10 milliliter sterile water syringe. So I'm gonna attach that because I definitely need two hands to have that on there. That's where my students often kind of falter. They forget to put the sterile water um, syringe on the urinary catheter and once they contaminate their hands, it's very difficult to do it with one hand. So don't forget that step. The next thing I have is my lubricant. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some lubricant in the tray. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take the sheath off. You can take the sheath completely off. We've done extensive background research into this. I still feel a little bit more comfortable having it on to at least on this side of the catheter because it just helps me to feel like I'm keeping it protected. But if you take the sheath off, that is acceptable as well. A lot of the kits no longer have them. 
So I'm gonna lubricate two to three inches and now I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my tray, making sure that it's not gonna fall, okay? And I'm gonna take my tray and bring it over to my patient. Okay, so before I contaminate my non-dominant hand, what I wanna do is look at my kit and see if I have everything ready. Do I have everything that I need um, set up? And in this case, I have my swabs, my syringe is connected, and I've already lubricated my catheter, so I'm ready to contaminate my non-dominant hand. I'm gonna open the labia, and I'm gonna grab my first swab stick, and I'm gonna go on the side that's on the furthest away from me, from top to bottom. And notice that when I'm discarding my swab stick, I'm not reaching over my sterile kit. So when I reach over, I'm going to go this way and throw it in the trash. So now I'm gonna go on the side that's closest to me from top to bottom and discard it. And then lastly, I'm gonna go right over the meatus from top to bottom. So now I have cleaned the site and I'm gonna grab my catheter and I'm going to insert it into the meatus. Now it's very important that once you hold the labia open and start cleaning, that you do not release it. Because if you do, it's considered contaminated, you will fail your validation. The other thing that's very important is, if I insert the catheter into the vagina by accident, I'm going to leave the catheter in, I'm going to get a new kit, start the process all over again, and the reason for leaving the catheter in the vagina is because now you know you're gonna go above that location. So if we look at the Taylor's Clinical Nursing textbook, it tells you that once you have inserted the catheter and you see urine, you're gonna go ahead and insert the catheter two to three inches further, okay? Just because we might just be in the urethra at that point, we wanna make sure that we're in the bladder. And then you're going to go ahead and take your non-dominant hand and secure the catheter, hold the catheter in place while you inflate the balloon. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. This is just feels more comfortable to me. So what I do is I take the non-dominant, my contaminated hand, and I inflate the balloon. And my reasoning for this is in a situation where maybe my catheter slipped a little bit and it's not in the bladder, it's actually in the urethra, I go to inflate the balloon, I feel resistance, now, I am not able to push that catheter in any further because I have now contaminated it with my um, non-dominant hand, with my contaminated hand. So I inflate the balloon and make sure that the sterile hand is the one that's always on the catheter. So now the balloon is inflated. I'm gonna do a very soft tug here to make sure it's in place. And I'm gonna disconnect my syringe. Very important, another place where even nurses go wrong. You get excited, the catheter is in and you forget to take the syringe off and now your balloon deflates and your catheter is back out and you have to do it all over again. So now my catheter is in. I'm going to discard all of these supplies and I'm going to take off my gloves, perform hand hygiene and secure my urinary catheter. So we can leave this here. and I'm gonna ask my patient how she's doing. If I need to obtain a urine culture, which we said this patient is here for suspected sepsis, so I would definitely want to obtain a urine culture. So we can just tear the fenestrated drape. I'm taking off my gloves. I don't wanna to touch anything in the room with these gloves. These are contaminated gloves. So I take my gloves off, I perform hand hygiene, and then I would put on a set of new clean gloves and I would grab the stat lock I'm gonna put the patient's leg down. And I wanna secure the catheter. When you secure the catheter, make sure that you're not putting the um, stat lock too low because it's gonna be tugging. And you also don't want it too loose, okay? So the purpose of the stat lock or your securing device is to keep the catheter from floating in and out of the, me, the meatus moving back and forth because that's gonna introduce bacteria and also to prevent it from tugging or hurting the patient. So I'm gonna secure it about, I would say that's pretty good. And then I would put the drainage bag below the patient and I would take note of how much urine I had, the color, 
the consistency, if there's any odor, is there any sediment in the urine? And I would document that I inserted a 14 French indwelling urinary catheter on this patient. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to um, put them in the comments section. Kick. Hey, hey.